Being a young kid that, move, that moves away from home, and you're thrown out on your own, basically. You're, you said, okay, you're, here's your new life. You live on your own. You know, you got to feed yourself. You got to clothe yourself. You got to, you know, you got to rent your own place. You got to find furniture. You got to get all that, you know, into your head and, and try to digest it, and then, then hockey. And I think the the biggest thing for me was the a few of the coaches that I, I had down the line. You know how I learned from them. You know, you're you're a very young man, or even playing junior hockey, and you think you know everything, and you, actually you really don't. You have no clue. So, coaches teaching you. Um, a good group of older guys that I played with that were, you know, it's different in junior. If you're 17 years old and you're playing with 20 year olds, but now you're 21 years old and you're playing with 30 year old guys. You know, and I actually ran into a great group, great group of uh, older players that. Uh, you know, at the time of, uh, you know, as a player, as a person, you want to be a sponge, hopefully, and you can, you know, take the good and the bad and, you know, put the two together, you know, separate the two and learn from one and hopefully not make the same mistakes that those guys made because they'll tell you that they did. So it was, I think, the, the, the growing up in the game and mentally and how you mature as a person is probably the biggest thing that a lot of guys gain from it. It was pretty amazing. It was... Uh, it was one of those years where it just kind of flowed every day, every week, every game flowed into each other and we got better and better and better. And uh, we always had a couple guys that, a few guys that went to the World Juniors as well. So we did have a very good team as far as really good individual players, but as a team we played as four line, six defensemen. And that first year just seemed so natural just to go on and keep winning and winning and winning. But the next year we, we, we battled a little bit before Christmas. Our record wasn't that, wasn't that good. But after Christmas, when we came back after our break, we started to uh, to bond together again at the jail as a team again, and then uh, we went on our way to win our second Memorial Cup. Every guy in that dressing room was the exact same type of guy. Like, we had no problems whatsoever with, with any players. Nobody thought they were better than each other, from the old guys to the young guys. Uh, we stood behind each other, we stood up for each other, uh, on and off the ice, and we were that was that's how close of a, knit, of a team that we had, and then saying that it translated to the ice surface. So we had four pretty good lines and six really good defensemen, and, and, and uh, you know a couple of good goalies. Uh, Mark Peterson, I remember at the time, Mark Peterson for the three years I was there was the only guy that made really the top 20 scoring for the Western Hockey League all three years, and he was the only guy out of those three years. And uh, you know it says something a lot for the individuals that we had on that team. Very exciting. Uh, I, I can remember the day because it was, it was a Thursday night game and it was the first time there was ever Hockey Night Canada on a Thursday night and they ended up having it on um, on CBC and then um, I think the goal was scored in, in the second period and we ended up winning I think 5-2 against Montreal all the time so it was uh, it was pretty remarkable that night. Pretty honored about it. Um, it's not an individual award and I'm pretty proud to say that it was a team oriented award for us. Uh, so it was like 20 to 22 guys, 23 guys every year that sacrificed and did what they could. And, you know, we got rewarded rewarded by, by winning two World Cups. Plus, you know, you get to go into the, the Sports Hall of Fame, which is pretty special.